Hi, I'm John Hope. I'm one of the senior sales engineers at Sophos, and I'm here with Virtue Technologies today to talk to you a bit about our security heartbeat technology. In this session, what I'm going to do is show you how we can use our security heartbeat technology to isolate an endpoint automatically if the worst happens and it becomes compromised. This is all thanks to our synchronized security technology, where we're taking individual separate security solutions and coordinating them as a system. In this case, we're going to look specifically at how we can coordinate our endpoint, firewall, and our encryption technologies. So the idea behind synchronized security and security heartbeat is that the moment a device becomes compromised, the security heartbeat status, which would normally be green indicating a healthy endpoint, will change to red. And that indicates to the rest of the software system that that device is in some way compromised and has a problem. What we can do is coordinate that with our firewall technology so that the firewall can change its stance towards this device which is now potentially compromised. For example, we could block access to internal servers or we could block access to the internet. And this is a very powerful security technology because it will allow our system to automatically respond if the worst happens and an outbreak occurs. So I'm going to show you this through a video and I'm going to show you this from the perspective of both the administrator and also how things look from the user's point of view. And what you'll see here is an ideal Sophos customer which is invested in Sophos Central Endpoint Advanced and Intercept X to protect their endpoint. They have our XG firewall at the edge of our, their network and they're encrypting all of their data using our Safeguard Enterprise product. And you'll see how those individual separate security solutions coordinate their defenses when things go wrong. So the first thing to know is that by default, Safeguard Enterprise will encrypt all of the user's data. So the moment they create a Word document, just in case there's any sensitive information in there, the default stance is to encrypt it. And you can see it's encrypted by right-clicking on the file attributes, or indeed just looking at the icon will show you a little padlock to indicate that that file is encrypted. Down the bottom, we have our Sophos endpoint installed, and you can see a big green tick there means everything is working just the way it should. This user is able to browse the web and they're going through our XG firewall to do so. And as well as processing this user's browsing activity, the XG is constantly receiving a security heartbeat from this device. And you can see that in the top right hand corner of the management screen. So the green number two there indicates we're receiving two security heartbeats, both of which are healthy. Now things will get more interesting when I start to open up the user's email because I know there's a phishing email sitting there. So often users being users, they will open up the email. In this case, it wants us to enable macros, which hopefully we all know is a bad idea. Uh-oh, turned out that was ransomware. But what you saw there is IntercepTX detecting the cryptography attack and shutting it down. What it's also done is change the security heartbeat status to red and remove the encryption keys from the user. It's now telling the firewall that this device has a problem, not just by its IP address, but also more usefully by username and by hostname, allowing the admin to find that device very quickly. More importantly, however, the device has gone into a mode of self-defense. So I've blocked internet access to this device and I've removed the encryption keys that mean we're not able to open any encrypted documentation. And the device will maintain this mode of self-defense until the problem is cleaned up. So once we restore health to this device by removing the threat, you'll see the encryption keys come back to the user and their workflow is now completely restored. So if they want to go back online, they're very welcome to do so. If they want to open sensitive documentation, then we've given them the encryption keys back and they're able to access that data. But bear in mind, all the time where this device was potentially compromised, we blocked all of that access automatically. Now that's the self-defense angle, but also we can use synchronized security to learn more from the attack. So this is the root cause analysis, which is part of IntercepTX. And we can open up a visualization of that attack chain that you just saw. We can very quickly see that 19 business files were impacted as a result of that attack. And if we open up the visualization, here we can see all of the actors and processes involved in that attack chain. The bits that I'm interested in specifically are twofold, really. First of all, we have the blue dot which is the beacon event. This is the thing that Sophos detected as being malicious in nature. In this case, the Sophos tester executable was trying to encrypt those 19 files underneath it. Now, if we look a little higher up, here we have a red dot. And the red dot is the root cause. In this case, it's WinWord. Remember, I opened that Word document? Well, the moment I enabled macros is the moment where all hell broke loose. And what you can see here are other processes being spawned in green, files being contacted in light blue, reg keys in mid blue, and network connection attempts happening in orange. 
Now, nobody in their right mind would ever stand in front of you and say that they can offer you 100% security. But if you can consider the attack vectors that are open to a would-be cyber criminal in a network protected in the way that I've just illustrated, it's pretty hard to see where the gaps are. Because one option for our would-be cyber criminal is to leave the software security alone. We look constantly for indicators of compromise. So the moment the device looks like it may be in a state of compromise, we'll change the security heartbeat status to red. If you built a policy like I did, bearing in mind that most cyber criminals are on the outside of the network, if you cut off its internet access, that device simply blinks out from the hacker's perspective and they have to go and find another victim. So an alternative approach might be to attempt to disable software security. Now it goes without saying that we've incorporated technologies like tamper protection to make sure that the device can't have its protection removed. And again, the moment the cyber criminal gets anywhere with this kind of approach, we'll change the security heartbeat status to red and the device will simply go offline. So a third and final choice might be to attempt to disable the security heartbeat. It's obvious that Sophos has built in technology to make sure the heartbeat can't be spoofed and can't be removed. But just for the purposes of argument, let's say that somehow the cyber criminal makes some progress in terms of disabling the heartbeat. We treat missing heartbeats in the same way that we do red heartbeats. So the moment a heartbeat goes missing from a device that's previously been protected by Sophos, we'll treat that like it has a red heartbeat. And again, we'll cut that device off the network and the cyber criminal has to then move on to another target. So there you can see how our innovative approach at Sophos of coordinating defense from both the endpoint and the firewall and incorporating encryption technology means that we can automatically isolate a device if it becomes compromised. And by removing encryption keys, we can make sure that cyber criminals aren't able to steal any data out of the organization.